Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. I'm making a haunted village for the Haunted Halloween Challenge. Hosted by Jackie of Crafting in Mimi's World and Ellie of DIY from House to Home. Guest host is Misty of Glee Span Designs. Let's get into it. I've cut a variety of shapes from half inch pine. Everything has been sanded and I'm ready to paint. I base coat everything with Americana Sun Bleach. I'll give it two coats, except the sides. Those I base coat with Ceramco Charcoal. I marked some lines on my haunted church. This will be the center of my village. I've also cut a doorway from a shim to add a 3D element to the church. I'll paint in the lines with Ceramco Rain Gray. I want them sketchy so that it looks like old wood siding. I outline the windows and the doorway with ring gray also. I lightly sand to distress a bit. I use Sobo, which is an all-purpose craft glow and hot glow to affix the doorway. I've printed out a door and window on cardstock. I grabbed them from photos I found on Pinterest and Google. I just looked for creepy old images and sized them in Photoshop. Then I'll Mod Podge them into place. I did spray these with the clear matte sealer first. If you have an inkjet printer, you'll want to do that before you Mod Podge because the Mod Podge will smear the ink otherwise. If you don't have clear matte spray paint, you can use hairspray. That works too. I apply a healthy coat of Mod Podge to both the wood and the back of the paper and I position them where I want them. I roll over them with my brayer to make sure there's good contact and then I'll give them a top coat of Mod Podge. It's time to distress. I'll start by dry brushing the edges with Ceram Coat Seafoam and I add it really just anywhere that pleases my eye. Next, I dry brush it with Hippo Gray to grunge it up a bit. I try to catch the edges of the doorway and the paper images to help them blend in a wee bit. I spray painted this piece of vellum with Rust-Oleum Sienna Mist. This is a gallery glass sheet, but I do know that the Dollar Tree has cutting board sheets that are made of the same thing. Anyway, I use scissors to cut out the pieces to cover my windows for a stained glass appearance. And I paint on some lines to section the window and I'll attach them from behind with hot glue. With my liner brush and charcoal, I'll add some spooky tree branches. This is easy enough to do. Just have fun with it. Also gonna add a creepy fence under the windows and I'll add some branches and leaves on the other side of the uh, church as well. These are just lines with little triangles, arrow looking things on top. And here are those extra branches I was talking about. 
the village needs a moon, so I've painted a 4 inch round white and I cut a moon face from vinyl with my silhouette. I'll apply that and then I'll use some floating medium and hippo grey to shade the moon. The Fulgore floating medium is like a gel product that will help water down the color, so I prep my brush with the floating medium and I will side load with hippo grey. I just scoop some onto the corner of my brush and I'll stroke it on my plate to load the bristles. This will fan out the paint to give it a gradient of color. With the paint corner of my brush to the edge, I'll shade right around the perimeter and I reload as needed. With a skewer, I'll dip dot some craters. I glue them into place with Sobo and hot glue. There. He's so cute. The next two buildings will be the broom shop and the witch's tea room. I'm decoupaging them with some tissue paper, a healthy coat, a Mod Podge, and I place the tissue paper over top. And then I'm burnishing with my brayer, then top coating it with more Mod Podge. I add my paper elements to the broom shop and give them top coat. That we sign says Salem Broom Company. I made that in Photoshop. So it's the same deal for the tea shop, just applying the tissue paper. And now for my paper element, this is an invitation that I found on Pinterest. I just cut out the wee section that said, which is tea. While I wait for that to dry, I'll burn off the excess tissue paper. I have a cup of water close by just in case. The flame will only burn the paper that doesn't have Mod Podge on it. If you use this method, please be extra careful. I brush away the ash and I'll add some vinyl brooms and bats. And I add this cute teacup to the tea shop. I've already burned away the tissue paper. And now, I'll distress everything, just like before. The next two buildings are the Witch's House and the Black Cat House. Same process for the tissue paper and all of the paper and vinyl elements. I'm adding an outline around the door and window on the witch house, this time with sun bleached. I felt it needed it with such a busy background. I'm adding a bit of paint above the door too because that's where the lantern will go and I want a solid background so it looks like it's lit. I'm applying my vinyl witch and lantern. And the cats to the other house. I love that cat in the window. So cute. Now for some painted features. I ran gray crack for the black cat's wall. I smear it a bit with my finger and I'll darken it with hippo gray. I'm adding some falling leaves with charcoal and let's add a crack over here. I think I'll add some spooky branches to the witch's house too. Both get the same distressing treatment as the other buildings. Seafoam first, then hippo.
Next two houses are super easy. I Mod Podge on these two Raven picks and Distress. This one here doesn't fill the entire space, but that's okay. We'll make it work. The last two houses will also get just paper images. One is a vintage newspaper illustration. The other is a vintage pick from a Woolworths Halloween display. Again, one fills up the surface, the other doesn't, but we make it work. This is the Woolworths display. I love it. Takes me back. Remember five and tens or five and dimes like Woolworths and Kreskis? Each will get a top coat and distressing. I'll add crackle medium to my wood pumpkins, which will be the end caps to my display. I give them a nice thick coat and I'll let them dry. I paint them with Americana Burnt Orange. The cracks start appearing as the paint dries. I'll distress them with the same colors as I did all the other houses for consistency. And finished. Final look. I've placed an electric candle behind the Haunted Church to add a soft glow to the windows. I had so much fun making this. I love the way it turned out. It has an eerie charm. Let me know what you think. Thank you Jackie, Ellie, and Misty for hosting. Please be sure to check out their channels. Links are in the description box along with the playlist and a list of my supplies. You're definitely going to want to check it out to see all the creative haunted houses. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.